This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from October 27th to October 29th of 2023. Hi, if you're new, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad series, where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. I have nothing else to say. We can go straight to the update as long as you already smashed the like button and dropped a random comment for the YouTube algorithm. Oh, oh, oh and, and also... Happy Halloween. I guess you're probably watching this on the 30th and Halloween is the day after. All right, let's begin. Okay, so as always, we start with the top leagues in Europe. And the first one will be the English Premier League. So why don't we go there and start with Matt Turner, from Nottingham Forest. On Sunday, Matt Turner started and played the full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest during their 3-0 loss to Liverpool. So the first goal, Matt Turner made a good save and Liverpool scored off a rebound. The second goal, he had zero blame. Now, goal number three from Liverpool, it was pretty much all on Matt Turner. Okay, not all on Matt Turner, but probably like 95% of the goal was Matt Turner's fault. You see, he came off his line till a point where he was outside the box. He mistimed the ball and was caught on no man's land, which left a wide open net for Mo Salah to score. If he had just stayed on his goal, he probably would have been fine. Maybe Liverpool would have still scored because it's Mo Salah, but he probably should have stayed there. Now, keep in mind that he's not the main reason they lost, but mistakes like that cannot and shouldn't happen. Moving on, next up is Chris Richards from Crystal Palace. On Friday, Richards stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Crystal Palace during their 2-1 loss to Tottenham. Now, look at this. Tottenham actually leads the English Premier League at the time of this recording, and I fully expect them to bottle this at some point, probably sooner rather than later. But look, if they win the Premier League right after Harry Kane leaves, it would actually be one of the funniest things ever. And I don't really expect Tottenham to win the Premier League, and I don't expect Bayern to lose the Bundesliga, but could you just imagine if those two things happened this season, it would be pretty darn funny. But back to the Americans abroad, the next player is Austin Trusty from Sheffield United. On Saturday, Trusty started again for Sheffield United and played the full 90 minutes during their 5-0 loss to Arsenal. I watched the first half and the first goal scored by Neketia was on Trusty. Terrible defending, to be honest. Then I missed the second half because I wanted to focus on other games during that morning. But if your defense concedes five goals and Nketia gets a hat trick, there is no way you played well. I'm sorry, I know Trusty is in the Premier League, just like the entire Sheffield United side, but it does not seem like the Premier League is his level or Sheffield at all. They look like they're championship players playing in the Premier League, and they're probably going to be in the EFL Championship next season. Moving on, next up are the Fulham boys, Tim Ream and A-Rob. On Sunday, A-Rob and Tim Ream both started and played the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 1-1 draw with Brighton. Now, I would have talked about Tyler Adams, but as we said multiple times here at the channel, he's injured and out at least until February of 2024. So the last player, the last American we're going to talk about from the English Premier League is Luca Coleosho from Burnley. And on Saturday, Coleosho was back in the starting 11 for Burnley, so he started, as I just said, and played 81 minutes for them during their 2-1 loss to burn it. Now that we're done with England, we can go to Italy. And why don't we start with the Milan boys, Christian Pulisic and Yunus Musa. On Sunday, Pulisic and Musa both started for Milan during their 2-2 away draw with Napoli, which technically is a good result, but considering they had a 2-0 lead at halftime and they blew that 2-0 lead, the draw wasn't that good. Yunus Musa played the full 90 minutes and was absolutely fantastic in the first half, and he was also very good in the second half. Great on both ends, and he was all over the field. Looked good defensively and on the ball going forward. As for Christian Pulisic, he had a very good first half while even getting the assist for the first goal with a fantastic lefty cross to Giroud. He was then subbed off at halftime due to a muscle strain or tightness. It wasn't really clear, but it was reported that it was just due to precaution, and let's hope it doesn't keep him out at all. I mean, they don't have any matches during the midweek, so he'll get plenty of rest, and hopefully Pulisic's available for their next weekend match in the Serie A. And completely off topic, but man, Giroud would be great for Greg Berhalter and his system. He is literally Berhalter's dream center forward. The dude knows how to score off crosses. Let's just say that Olivier Giroud is one of the most underrated center forwards of all time, and he's also perfect for Berhalter ball. But unfortunately, he's French. And unfortunately, 
Burhalter is the U.S. Men's National Team's coach. Still in Italy, we have Wes McKinney and Tim Weah from Juventus. On Saturday, Weah and McKinney both started for Juventus during their 1-0 win over Verona in the Serie A. McKinney played the full 90 minutes while Tim Weah was subbed off at halftime. Also, the same situation as Christian Pulisic due to precaution or maybe a minor injury. It might be a bit more severe than Pulisic, but it seemed like it was just due to precaution. But honestly, Weah had a very good first half. As for Weston McKinney, he had a very good game. He should have had an assist, but the goal was disallowed. He would have assisted Keane. And regardless of that, he was great all over the field, playing central, out wide, just a good overall performance from Weston McKinney on both ends. I mean, it was also a pretty dominant performance from Juventus in general, so McKinney wasn't tested defensively that much. It was just 1-0, the overall win, but Juventus probably could have won 2 3 4 0 and it would have been a fair result. So essentially in Italy before we move on to Germany, let's just hope that Tim Weah and Christian Pulisic don't miss any time and it was both just because of precaution, both of the halftime subs, which by the way, a lot of Americans got subbed out at halftime during this weekend. Some because of injuries like those or precaution and some because they dropped the stinker. We're done with Italy, so it's time to talk about the Americans that play in Germany in the Bundesliga. So why don't we start with Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund and Paxton Aronson from Eintracht Frankfurt because they clashed over the weekend. And on Sunday, Gio Reyna started for the first time this season for Borussia Dortmund, but played only 45 minutes for them during their 3-3 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt. As for Paxton Aronson, they, he didn't even make the bench for Eintracht. I didn't find any injury reports, so I think it's safe to assume that it might have just been a coaching decision. As for Gio Reyna, he played as a left winger. He started off the match well, and then he had a very quiet first half after the first 5-10 to 10 minutes. I didn't really think he was bad by any means. He was okay. He was fine. Dorman was just a mess defensively, and I think the reason Terzic sent in Mukoku and Adayemi was to get two players that would track back and protect the flanks because Dortmund was getting exposed down the flank, especially in transition. Still, Gio Reyna is also not a winger and he should probably be playing central. Greg Berhalter has finally figured out that Gio has to play central. When will Terzic do the same? Gio Reyna doesn't really have the pace, explosiveness, and work rate to constantly track back on the wing, or at least how the modern day wingers have to play. And even while attacking down the flank, that ain't his best. He is a 10 or an attacking 8. And I hope Terzic at some point comes to his senses and understands that's where Gio should play. I mean, even Greg Berhalter figured that out. Thanks to Anthony Hudson and BJ. Those guys are awesome. And you know who else is awesome? You. Because you probably smashed the like button already. And that's how we rig the YouTube algorithm. Okay, but enough of Gio Reyna. Let's talk about Brendan Aronson from Union Berlin. On Saturday, Aronson started and played 60 minutes for Union Berlin during their 2-0 loss to Werder Bremen. Sure, I could go on and talk about Aronson's struggles in the Bundesliga, but what the heck is happening to Union Berlin? That is 10 losses in a row. This is a team that right now is battling against relegation. And last season, they qualified to the Champions League. This was not a downfall I was expecting this season. No, seriously, their downfall has been far worse and sharper than Brendan Aronson's downfall, which has also been fairly sharp. I hope he bounces back, but it's not looking really good. But let's move on from that and talk about John Brooks from Hoffenheim. On Saturday, Brooks started and played the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their 3-2 win over Stuttgart while playing away. And this is the Stuttgart that prior to this match, they had seven wins and only one loss. Next up are Joe Scali and Pifok from Borussia Mönchengladbach and, and also Leonard Maloney from Heidenheim because they clashed over the weekend. Now, I didn't watch the match, but I talked to a friend of the channel that I trust very much with some quick takes to update me on their performances. And his name is Daniel Smith, and this is what he said. Pifok had a good hold-up play. He also had a header that was cleared off the line, but he was subbed out holding his groin. So we don't know if Pifok's actually injured right there. Joe Scali played a part in the goal conceded as he got beat as the last man back on a corner kick, but he was better in the second half. As for Maloney, he did his usual running around a lot with some headers and I guess some clapping. So y'all can go follow Daniel Smith 1022 on Twitter. Great takes, great reporting. Go give him a follow. Last but not least in Germany in the Bundesliga, we have Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg. 
And on Saturday, Kevin Paredes actually started and played 74 minutes for Wolfsburg during their 3-2 loss to Augsburg. So there are too many games to watch and follow and I can't give you a real opinion in regards to this player because I didn't really watch this game as well. There were other matches to watch. But based on people I trust, once again, they said Paredes looked good for Wolfsburg. And then I checked the stats and it actually seemed like he did have a good match. Hopefully, he continues to start for Wolfsburg. But since I didn't watch Kevin Paredes, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you did watch him. But apparently, he looked good on this start for Wolfsburg. Now we're off to Spain, and we're going to talk about Luca de la Torre from Celta de Vigo. On Friday, Luca de la Torre started and played the full 90 minutes for Celta de Vigo during their 1-0 loss to Girona. So I was able to watch the end of this match, and Luca was playing as a left midfielder in a 4-4-2 formation. He even scored a goal that was disallowed due to his teammate fouling the goalkeeper. Girona scored right after that and got the 1-0 victory, which put Girona at the top of the table during the time of this recording. Actually, prior to the time of this recording, because Real Madrid beat Barcelona at El Clasico right after. Regardless, this loss sent Celta de Vigo deeper into the relegation zone. By the way, we're going to have another American playing in La Liga very soon, and that American is Johnny Cardoso, but I'll report on that later in the video when we reach the section that we talk about the Brazilian league. Next up is Folarin Balogun from Monaco. So we're actually leaving Spain and we're going to France. On Sunday, Balogun started and was subbed off at halftime, which was a trend that happened way too much this weekend with the Americans abroad, more than I'm comfortable with, during Monaco's 2-0 loss to Liu. I watched the first half and honestly, he was pretty bad and an early sub was justified as they were already down 2-0 and trying to make a comeback. Jonathan David also seemed to have been benched by Liu and he came off the bench for them in the second half. So essentially, Balogun Santi Jimenez and Jonathan David, the top three center forwards of CONCACAF, combined for zero goals over the weekend. You know what? A CONCACAF abroad episode would be one heck of an episode. By the way, who's the best center forward in CONCACAF? Santi Jimenez, Mikel Antonio, Floating Balogun, Jonathan David. I guess you can mention Pepe, even though that would be kind of a crazy take if you say Pepe is the best center forward in CONCACAF right now. And should I make a video about that, diving into some of the stats, my opinions, and my ranking of the top center forwards in CONCACAF? Let us know in the comment section if I should or not. Because as we always say, this right here is a democracy, not a dictatorship, even though I'm always in power. So I'm like a democratic dictator. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, but moving on, let's go to the Netherlands, to the Eredivisie, and start with PSV that has Serginho Des, Malik Tillman, and Ricardo Pepe. On Sunday, Tillman and Des both started for PSV during their 5-2 win over Ajax in the Eredivisie. So 5-2 against Ajax a season or two ago would be a massive win, but this is not the Ajax that you're used to. This is an Ajax that is deep into the relegation zone. No, like seriously, they're literally in last place. And sure, they have two games in hand, so they could get out of it. But it doesn't really matter if you can't win. You can have five games in hand. If you can't win a game to save your life, it doesn't really matter. And they're currently in last place place. Okay, but back to the Americans. So Serginho Dest went the full 90 minutes and played well, in my opinion. Malik Tillman was subbed out at halftime and he did not play well. I'll talk more about that very soon. And Ricardo Pepe was subbed in in the last like seven minutes or so of the match when PSV already had a 5-2 lead. So in regards to Tillman, let's go back to that. This is what PSV's manager, their head coach, had to say after the game. And what I'm about to spit out into this mic are his words, not mine. And he said, it was rubbish. I didn't have to shout at halftime. I just said, you and you get out. One of them being Malik Tillman. We applied pressure in a different way after the break and the boys who came on made the difference. So that's not a good look for Malik Tillman, but he did bounce back from the oversleeping incident. So hopefully he can bounce back from this as well. But clearly his boss, the PSV manager, the PSV coach was pissed at halftime and it worked they got a 5-2 win oh by the way i do make fun of mexico quite a bit i banter a lot but chucky lozano got a hat trick so i gotta praise that so congratulations and that's my report on the l3 abroad i should probably do an l3 abroad episode one day there's not that many mexicans abroad it'll take me like two three minutes 
Still in the Eredivisie, we have Taylor Booth from Utrecht that is also in the relegation zone. On Saturday, Taylor Booth started and played 61 minutes for Utrecht during their 0-0 draw with Fortuna Sittard. Now let's go back to the United Kingdom. I'm not going to report on the EFL Championship probably until Josh Sargent is back or if Haji Wright, Reggie Cannon, one of those players scores a goal because they're not very relevant for the U.S. men's national team roster at the moment besides Josh Sargent when he's back from injury. But still in the U.K., let's go to Scotland and talk about Cameron Carter Vickers from Celtic. On Saturday, Cameron Carter Vickers started and went the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 0 0 draw with Hibernian in Scotland. Not a great result, but Celtic still leads the league with some comfort. Like Rangers are not reaching them anytime soon, if ever. Also, this week, I'm not going to be reporting on the second division of Italy. Maybe next week, I'll report on Tenor Testman, General Cabusio, Christopher Lund. I know Tenor Testman got an assist this weekend, but there's only so much soccer I can cover and so much soccer I can watch. But let's go to the Belgium League. Super quick. And we'll start with Gaga Slonina from Upin. On Saturday, Slonina started and got a clean sheet for Upin during their 2 0 win over Charleroi. And he was very busy in the match, actually. He made five saves, got one punch, 11 recoveries. And by punch, I don't mean like punching someone in the face, like punching the ball. And this is actually his first clean sheet of the season. Yeah, seriously, he didn't punch someone because that would obviously give you a red card. This is not the UFC or boxing. Still in Belgium on Sunday, Mark McKenzie was not available for Genk and I could not find any injury reports on it. He did get a yellow card in the previous match, so I actually think he was just serving suspension. Now, Sam Vines, he is actually injured, so he was not available for Antwerp. And Brian Reynolds from Westerlo on Sunday, he started and played the full 90 minutes for Westerlo during their 3-1 loss to Union Saint. Now we're done with the Americans abroad in Europe. We're going to go to two more Americans, one that plays in South America and one that plays in Mexico. The first one of them being Johnny Cardoso from Internacional. And on Sunday, Johnny started for Internacional once again. They got an early red. He ended up having to play center back, but that's not what's important here. Johnny's deal to Real Betis seems to be a done deal deal so they didn't sign the paperwork yet so it's obviously not official but the agreement is in place and johnny should be heading to la liga and to real betis this winter in january in regards to the transfer fee it's not made public yet but it's somewhat between 5 to 10 million euros and international would hold a percentage of a future transfer fee so yes johnny will finally get his move to Europe, to a top league, and honestly, to a very good team, Real Betis. Last but not least, we have Alejandro Zendejas from Club America in Mexico. On Saturday, Zendejas started and played 45 minutes for Club America during their 3-0 win over Monterrey in Liga MX. He was pulled out at halftime because they already had a 3-0 lead, so they were essentially resting some of their players. And Zendejas scored a golazo for Club America, which many thought it was not a golazo when I put that on Twitter. But you see, golazos are not exclusive into individual brilliance. When there's a brilliant teamwork, like the one from this play specifically, we also call it a golazo. Literally, a tap-in can be a golazo depending on how you got to the tap-in. Does that make any sense? Sometimes the way a play finishes is very simple, but how you got there was brilliant, and that would be a golazo. Like, for example, if Messi dribbles past everyone and just passes the ball to like Samuel Eto'o and Samuel Eto'o just taps it in, it was a golazo. Right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. We have great content coming this week. U.S. men's national team roster predictions, U.S. development episodes that we're also doing with some special guests. And maybe we'll do a top striker in CONCACAF video probably next week. If you guys want us to do it, we'll gladly do so. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.